with safety matches. But how far are they safe? Let's see. Let me first introduce you to the chemical compositions of safety matches. The matchstick head is made of red phosphorus as igniter, sulfur as fuel, and potassium chloride as oxidizer, and also some fine glass powder which is coated over the matchstick head and adhesive to hold all these things. Well, the matching surface also contains red phosphorus and powder glass coating over that. The powder glass on both the sides creates friction and then ignites a spark. Then the matchstick head burns with the fuel and oxidizer. Well, there are different styles in lighting up a matchstick, and these are few of them. We will now get into slow motion and see what unfavorable things are happening sometimes when you light up a matchstick. I hope you guys have noticed the flares and these flares appear howsoever the way I strike the matchbox. Let's now speak of some math. 1 in 15 strikes, I see these flares. And 1 in 80 strikes, they shoot into your face. And if you are unlucky, they may shoot into your eyes too. Yes, it happens. It happened to one of my friends where the flares straight away with his right eye and a Later he had a neural disorder. These things can be dangerous. These are his ophthalmologist and neurologist reports. You can have a look. Let's now see the type of flares. This kind of flares are called shooting flares and they travel at a speed of 3 to 5 meters per second. As these are small flares, some of them may stop burning in the midway, but the crystal can still hit our eyes. The other type of flares are these flying flares, where they are bigger in size, but they travel slower than the shooting flares. But both of these can have adverse effects on us. Before we go into a microscopic footage, let me show you an experiment that the contents of safety matches can explode under certain conditions. Firstly, I have removed the matchstick head material and powdered it with the pen and also collected the matching surface material and then mixed the both with 2 is to 1 ratio. I also made sure that they are thoroughly mixed. Took 3 pinches into a glued paper and sealed it. I also made sure that it's airtight. These are called thunder caps. You may get a better illustration of making of this from Grant Thompson's video. The links are in the description. Now these thunder caps are ready for explosion tests. This way I am just trying to show you its intensity of explosion and this time with some powder. This thing will be useful to explain few things in the next part of the video. Just wanted to show you that the contents of safety matches can explode if they are airtight. Let's now get into macro and slow motion footage and see why the flares eject. Let's now see the first kind of flare. These are very tiny and they don't travel more than 5 cm. They stop burning in the midway and they do no harm to any part of our body. But still, I have collected this over a water surface and these are those fine flares. Let's now see the second type of flare. Uh, there you see the crack and from there, the flare starts to eject and this is that flare. And why does this flare eject? Now you got to remember the thunder caps and also see that the ignition starts at a finite point. Since there isn't any space for its expansion due to its own adjacent material, it starts to explode, of course, of less intensity, and thus behaving like a small thunder cap. And remember that these flares can come through any gap and hit your eye. This is one of that matchstick head where many explosions happen. Let's now see the third type of flare. I want you people to observe that molten material on the top of matchstick head. The flying flares are caused by those molten material. These molten material detaches from the matchstick head and take the momentum of our hands and then travel. Sometimes they stick to the matchbox and sometimes they fly off. So this may create accidents if they get into any inflammable substances. I also lit it up with an external flame and found that there are some liquid bubbles coming out of the matchstick head. I don't know what these are, might be an adhesive. Someone can comment if they know something of it. Even though I lit it up with an external flame, there are flares and this is that flare. Well, I checked the flares over many matchboxes of different manufacturers. Almost every matchbox is the same. A very few are least better. But how can we avoid this place? Well, there are three ways of doing it. One with selection of proper matchbox with continuous matching surfaces and smoother matching heads. Now you see that the first four are very rough and the fifth one is a proper and smoother matching head. Though they take more strikes to ignite, they burn slower, smoother and they don't eject flares as they have very good adhesive contained in it. So these are the two flares which didn't fly off. They stick to the matching head due to very good adhesive. The second, by changing the style and interactions of our hands with the matchbox. This is the general style used by most of the people, impacting the matchbox. Since you are holding it this way, giving a very rigid support to the matchbox, whatever the impact you make, the matchstick head only takes it. From the resolution of forces, you can see that you are digging into the matchbox and making it to explode like a thunder cap. And we are also not supposed to keep scratching till the end as the fire always wants to expand. 
Well, the best way to light up is to keep the matchbox away from your body and strike it from an edge. If it doesn't light up with the first try, rotate the matchstick and do it again. You can also hold the matchbox this way and strike gently from the edge. Well, the third way is to read it in a safety matches box. About 120 years back, there were a different kind of matchsticks called strike anyway matchsticks where they started to ignite on striking with any surface. They contain white phosphorus as an igniter, which is very flammable and thus causing many accidents and unintentional fires. Since then, these two were invented, where the matchstick head contained red phosphorus as an igniter and with the help of matching surface, it converts to white phosphorus and then starts to ignite. And then these are named as safety matches. But it's been 120 years and it's time for a redesign of the safety matches box. Taking all this into consideration, I have designed a new safety matchbox which will automatically help us in changing the physics we strike the matchbox and thus avoiding flames. So this is the safety matches box I have designed. This matchbox makes you to hold it this way and thus bringing flexibility and damping nature. So this time when you strike, the matchbox takes the impact, not the matchstick. Now you can see the difference in both the designs. On the left, you can see that the matchbox damps a bit, reducing the impact on the matchstick. Whereas on the right, the damping is very less and takes time to transfer the impact. This way, I am busting the shooting flares. And upon that, since I am striking it this way, I am giving very less contact time and length so that the fire can expand freely after crossing the edge. So this way, I am also avoiding the flying flares. Along with the general style, you can also strike the matchbox in other ways too. And this is an open source design, can be used by anyone. Hey guys, I hope you like this video. Do comment on what else analysis and considerations can be taken into redesign of safety matches. There are much more interesting videos coming from my side. Consider subscribing.